beautiful day here in sunny California. And today is our third day looking at the spiritual dimension of Hod, which we're translating really as humility and splendor. And today we enter into the day Yesod, or we have been all day in Yesod Shebahod. Yesod is foundation. Yesod is bonding. It's kind of like when you build a building, you need to have a strong foundation for it to stand. So I guess if we're looking at our humility, we need to have a strong foundation for it. And I haven't really talked a lot about judgment, but have you ever been in a situation where you meet a group for the first time <clears throat> and you just look at somebody and you judge them? You're like, I don't like that person. But there's really no reason for you not to like them. Or you get to know someone a little bit and they say one thing and it, it disrupts you and makes you not like them. I think a lot of that comes from our ego. It comes from fear. It comes from not meeting the other person where they are, but hoping that that person would be more like you want them to be. And I think when we consider humility and the foundations of humility or the bonding in humility, I think humility is an acceptance of who we are with all our faults and weaknesses. But on the other side, it's accepting other people for who they are, given their faults and their weaknesses. So that humility isn't only that I'm just a human being here and I'm flawed and I'm limited, but I recognize that everybody is and that I can't expect another human being to be everything I'm not or to not have the same challenges or the same obstacles or the same inner thoughts of um, unworthiness. So that Yesod Shebehod is an exploration on what binds us to people and that perhaps it is in our acceptance of others as opposed to our judgment of others that allows us to bond with them. It's so hard to do that. I think so often we're filled with the ideas that um, that we think other people should do or other people should be thinking a certain way or, or putting our own judgments of what it means to be a human being on others. But the fact is everybody's journey is so unique and so different that to rejoice in the differences, the fact is we get something a little bit different from every person in the world. Certain friends, you get one thing. Certain friends, you get another thing. From some, you're always laughing. From some, you may always be crying, in a good way. But it's our acceptance of that other person that allows us to bond with them. How is it that a couple is able to survive is the acceptance of those things that make them... I always use the word weird because I think all people are weird. But it's the acceptance of who the other person is wholly that allows us to be in true relationship with them. And that so often it turns to a place where a person does something that might surprise us or does something that we disapprove of and it colors our entire view of who that person is as if that one thing is who they are. Instead of saying, you know what, this person's flawed like me. It's almost like we have a humility for others that we accept human frailty in ourselves and in other people. And instead, our ego gets in the way and we 
um, don't want that person to be who they are. We want them to be who we want them to be. So today, let us consider the foundations of our humility, the bonding that happens between people and where our humility sits in that. Can we accept ourselves for who we are right now? And can we accept others for who they are right now? Just as when we do our meditations, we allow things to be just as they are for this moment. And in the future we can try to change them, but for now, we accept it. To accept yourself right now, given that you're home, given that you're sheltering in place, can you accept who you are at this moment? Early on as we sheltered in place, I was really thinking a lot about the idea that um, the veneer we put on ourselves to go out into the world has been broken down. And we're going to find out who we are, kind of that yesod of who we are deep down inside of us. And that was scary to discover who you are without the social constructs we put upon ourselves. But I hope that as we continue to see that we are who we are, that we can accept that. We can be happy about it. Because we're made up of everything. Are we ready? Yesod Shebehod the bonding of our humility with others, with ourselves. The foundation of our humility comes from non-judgment of ourselves and accepting ourselves as who we are. How appropriate that at the end we're going to be looking at the second of the three priestly benediction blessings. That second one says, may I feel luminous. Um, may I feel loved. You know, come to think of it, I think yesterday we did this. We should have done um, safety, but we did safety on Monday. Maybe I feel like I need a little more lum luminescence and, and love this week. So, um, sorry that we missed that first one, but we're going to just continue on with the second one. It feels like that may be meant to be, <laughs> that we do this one today again. So let's get ourselves into a comfortable yet strong position. Here we go. Breathing like we normally do, there's no need to put any kind of extra breath on it. And as our thoughts go away, let's just notice them. Notice them, and then in love, we bring ourselves back to our breath. And in doing so, we just allow everything to be as it is for this moment. If you'd like to also take in the sounds around you, the feeling in your body. Let's just allow things to be as they are for now.
just a little reminder as your mind takes you away. Just bring yourself back with chesed, with love, to your breath. Tie yourself to now.
as we start moving towards the end of our meditation together and we offer ourselves feelings, I invite you to express the desire to feel luminous and loved. Perhaps this one for today really has to do with what we need to do to bring light to the people we love. If we feel luminous, the light that shines from us can shine on others, and in turn, the love we give will be brought back to us as the beetles inform us. The love you get is equal to the love you give. So on each breath, may I feel luminous, may I feel shining, may I glow, may the light of my truth come out of me, may I feel luminous, may I feel loved, may I feel luminous, and loved. I invite you to offer that to yourself. May I feel luminous. May I feel loved. say it out loud, it sometimes helps. May I feel luminous. May I feel loved. May I feel loved. you if you'd like also to uh, bring someone to stand in front of you in your mind's eye and present to that person these same feelings. May you feel luminous. May you feel loved. feel luminous. May you feel loved. And in many ways we're offering that to each other, all of us that are on this meditation, so that each one of us receives that blessing from each other. May you feel luminous. May you feel loved. and offer those blessings to someone for several breaths. And when you're ready, bring it back to yourself and give yourselves two or three breaths. May I feel luminous. May I feel loved. May I feel loved. May I feel loved. And then 
for our final breaths together. Let us all dig into our breath. Concentrate on the now and allowing everything to be just as it is for now. Thank you for joining me today. Tomorrow we finish up Hod. I just want to stress patience to all of us. Patience. Humility. May you feel luminous. May you feel loved. Erev Tov. Have a beautiful evening. <laughs>